Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. Tonight we are in Acts chapter number eight. Once again, that is Acts chapter number eight. Uh, as always, I'm going to ask if there's anybody uh, that's not speaking and asking any questions, could you please make sure your mics are muted so we don't get any background noise or feedback? Uh, once again, everyone, we are in Acts chapter number eight. Is there any prayer requests before we get started? Do we have any prayer requests? All right. If there's no prayer requests, Brother Dave, if, if you're able, my brother, would you open us up with a word of prayer? Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this time, dear Father, for this day, dear Father, you brought us together again, dear Lord God, to share your word, to fellowship even with one another, dear Father, as we discuss the intent of your word unto us, dear Father. We're so grateful, dear Father, that you given us uh, a life that is now and that which is to come, should we be obedient and faithful unto you, dear Lord God. But we can only do what we can do through your son, dear Father. We can do nothing without him. We can do nothing without you, Lord God. And so with your son, dear Father, we pray, that, dear Lord God, that we continue to be obedient unto him, dear Lord God, for he saved us with his own life with his own blood, who brought us into righteousness and now lifts us up by the right hand of his righteousness, dear Father, as he sits on the right hand of the, of the Father. We're grateful, dear Father, for this time. We're grateful for those that are on the call, dear Lord God, and that and the, the person that will bring us uh, your enlightening word, dear Lord God. We're prayerful, dear Father, that, that the families that are represented Dear Lord God, will indeed be sanctified, dear Father, by those that are on the call, dear Father. And we pray that all families, dear Father, heed your word and uh, get closer to the Lord as we do during this call. Is by grace that we are grateful to your son, Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer, Brother Dave. Once again, everyone, we are in Acts chapter number eight. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Javier. Man, thank you, Brother Dave, for that prayer, my brother. God bless you, saints. Thank you for gathering uh, here. We're at this time studying Acts chapter number eight. Uh, this is our study, so we're going to study together. If you have any thoughts from the scriptures, uh, please bring them out so we can look at the different angles to rightly divide the scriptures in order for us to learn more. And grow more at this time in Acts chapter 7. We know that there's been a scattering, Stephen has been killed, and there's a scattering of the saints because of it. Uh, at this time, Brother Green, can you start off reading verses 1 through 8? I know it's past the hour. Can you read verses 1 through 8 in Acts chapter 8? Yes, 10. sir. 1 through 10? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse number 1. And Saul was. For those. Give me one second. For those who are unmuted, can you please mute your mic? Acts chapter 8 and verse number 1. The Bible reads, And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preach Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsy and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed. 
from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you for that reading. You know, when you look at Paul and what he did in verses 1, 1 through 4, it says that he made havoc of the church. You know, a question you want to ask is, why did he make havoc? When you go to Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1 through 5, it says, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dream of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him, keep his commandments, obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dream of dreams shall be put to death, because he has spoken to you to turn, spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So uh, Saul is living according to what he reads in the old law and what you're supposed to do. So they're bringing up this deity, Jesus the Christ. Saul knows about God the Father. But this new individual, Jesus the Christ, that they're bringing up. And he's living according to the law, according to Deuteronomy chapter 13. But he's failing to recognize the other scriptures that detail the coming of the Christ, the Messiah, the new covenant that is to come under place. And also what Moses mentioned, a prophet like unto me, he shall rise up. He is forgetting the other verses, but is focusing on Deuteronomy chapter number 13, 1 through 5. Now, that is what you're supposed to do but not concerning Christ, the Messiah. Now, you have Philip where he goes to Samaria. In John chapter 4, John chapter 4, there was already there was already a time when Jesus, he spoke to a Samaritan woman. He spoke to a Samaritan woman. And in John chapter 4, verse number uh, 19, it says, The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. Ye say that in Jerusalem. Is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. Now she also mentioned in verse 25 that I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples, marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou or why talkest thou? With her, the woman left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said unto the men, Come, see a man which told me all things which ever I did is not this uh, the Christ. And so here Jesus is talking uh, to the Samaritan woman, and then she goes and speak to the speaks to the men in Samaria. So they've heard the truth before they heard the mouth of Christ before. But here we have Philip in Acts chapter number eight, where he's preaching the gospel, he's casting out devils, he's healing those who are lame. Uh, policies, those who are possessed, and this individual named Simon, the sorcerer. Now, as she mentioned, they worshiped in this mountain. They talked about God. And then you have this individual who, which, which is be bewitching them with sorcery. So you have a mixture of, of them believing that in this mountain is a place where you are to worship. And then they have another Paul's teaching where this sorcerer is bewitching them. And it says, look who gave heed to them, from the least to the greatest. That means from the poorest or the unknown to the greatest individual, they knew this man in this area in Samaria as the great power of God. So they have a multitude of teaching there. First, they had a false teach, false teaching where they would go to the mountain. And then this individual comes out of nowhere bewitches them and from the least to the greatest is deceiving them uh, and and tricking them now it mentions that uh, they lamented uh for stephen uh <coughs> it says the devout man carried stephen to his burial verse two make great lamentation over him now saul was not one that was lamenting uh, over stephen saul was one 
that believed that what he was doing was the will of God by having Stephen killed according to the law because they were speaking about Jesus Christ. And according to the law, that's another deity. But according to also the law, it speaks about Christ and his coming. And so when you don't have the whole counsel of the old law, then you're going to miss portions and parts of it. Just like the New Testament. If you don't have all the parts of the New Testament, there's going to be something that you miss when it comes to the will of God. That's why it's needful to read your answer, ask questions. And as Jesus mentioned concerning every word, not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds uh, out of the mouth of God. And so if you can, Brother Henry, uh, can you read verses uh, 11, verses 11 through 20, please? Acts 8, verse 11 through verse number 20. The Bible yes, says, and to, him, and to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Your money perish with you, because you have thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Now, thank you, Brother Henry, for that reading. You know, when you look at what our brother read in, in verse number 11, it says, Because that of a long time he had bewitched him with sorcery. So they had him respect and regard to the sorcerer because he did it so long. Sometimes you have in the body of Christ where an elder or a preacher or a teacher is respected uh, because he's been there for a long time. And it doesn't matter what he says, the people will believe him because it's been of a long time. Orpheus Hayward, because he's teaching a long time. T.D. Jakes, because he's been teaching a long time. It doesn't matter if he parted with Diddy and what he did. Because a long time, you're connected to him versus connected to the father. And so you're not paying attention to the voice of the father. It, your ears override, override his voice, and you are directly connected to a man of flesh. And this is what happened in Samaria. And so as Philip was there, he's preached the truth. And even Simon, he obeyed. And he also was baptized. Now, when you look at what is mentioned, Philip was a preacher. He healed the lame, as we mentioned. Many that were possessed were taken out, unclean spirits. But as our brother read in verse number 14, they heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent Peter and John. And they were come, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of of the Lord. And so he was falling upon none of them. When it comes to that, it means gifts. When it describes that detail, it's describing gifts because it you already read uh in verse number 12, in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized. When it says they were baptized in the name of Christ, that means they received the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost can be defined as either the gifts that come from the Holy Ghost, or it can be described as an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, as Acts chapter 2, verse 38 uh, describes. But here, they sent Peter and John because they're apostles. And these apostles, when they lay their hands on them, they're going to just receive certain gifts, whether it's going to be a gift to heal, speak in a tongue, a gift to prophesy, a gift to cast out a devil. But whoever they lay their hands on, those individuals that get those gifts, will not have the power to transfer that gift over 
to someone else. If that were the case, Philip would have done the same thing. If that were the case, they didn't need to send Peter and John to Samaria. Philip would have did that while he was there, if he had the ability to do that. Now here it says uh, <clears throat> that they uh, he was falling upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So when you look at Acts chapter 10, looking at verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them all, which heard the word, and they were they of the circumcision, which believe were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because and on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. But then they were baptized afterward in the name of the Lord. Now, that was for the belief of the Jews. But here they prayed that the Holy Spirit will fall upon them. But as they arrived, they laid their hands on them because as they were on their way, the gifts of the Holy Ghost did not fall upon them. Now, this individual, Simon, um, he's seen that gift. He's seen that power. He gave and tried, he tried to give them money. But Peter mentioned it to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Now, here's also a, a brand new teaching is that Simon the Sorcerer believes that I can give you money and then I can get the power and then I can give it to someone else. He said, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands on, he may receive the Holy Ghost. I want to be like you. I want to be like an apostle. Because I've seen Philip. He's been, look at look at verse number uh, 13. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued, who continued Simon, with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, Philip was doing wonders and signs, miracles. But he wasn't transferring the power. But when he's seen Peter and John, he seen something different than what Philip was doing. He seen the power get transferred. And Simon said, I want that ability as well. And you cannot have the ability of an apostle to raise the dead or transfer that power to someone else. First Corinthians 13, 8. Today, prophesying is ceased. Tongue speaking is ceased. New information is ceased. It does not exist. There's a brother I talked to. He mentioned that there's a minister in the church that still believes that, that uh, you can lay hands on someone and miracles still exist today. He says he hasn't seen it yet, but he knows it exists, but he's wrongly dividing the scriptures. So here we have a case where Simon is uh, about to be reproved. Is there any questions or thoughts uh, before we go on? Any questions or thoughts? Uh, Brother Kennedy. Brother Javier, can you please go back on 12, verse 12, please? Sure. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. And so Philip was teaching about the kingdom of God, which is a church, and Jesus Christ himself. When they understood the gospel, the good news, then they were born again baptized, both women, men and women in Samaria in this time frame when Philip was there. Did you have a specific question about no, what I Philip did? Probably I used the wrong uh, uh, verse because I, I understood you, what you were saying about uh, that uh, baptism was the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Um, probably I, I, I misunderstood. Yeah, so when it says that it says right here in verse number 16, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So in verse 16, it's describing that the powers of the Holy Ghost, which come from the same spirit, which is speaking in tongues, prophesying, casting out devils to heal, was falling upon none of them. They were not prophesying. They were not speaking in tongues. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is the indwelling. They received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit when they were baptized. And the gifts was fallen upon none of them. In other words, God did not give them the gifts until Peter and John came 
They laid their hands on them. And then those gifts became, beca uh, began to get um, displayed by the saints because God distributed according to who he wanted the gifts to go to. So they were just baptized to receive the Holy Spirit indwelling, but they did not receive, sister, the gifts that comes from the Holy Ghost. Yes. Thank you. Now I get it. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you too, sister. Any questions or thoughts before we go to the next few verses? Um, Brother Kennedy, can you, can you read verse uh, 21 to verse number 30? Yes, 21 through 30. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in a gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Cadence, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in a chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Man, thank you, Brother Kennedy, for that reading, my brother. You know, when Simon mentioned here, pray to the Lord for me that none of those things which you have spoken upon me uh, come to pass. So he doesn't want the wrath because he believes he's been baptized. But in his mind, he still has the configuration of his past. He used to receive money for his sorcery. And in his conscience, he believes that this is going to be the same type of system. But he has to change and repent uh, from that. And so there may be some that come from the Baptist church, Pentecostal church, and they try to bring that type of mindset concerning gain as godliness, or we can trade some type of uh, godly communications or writings uh, for money where this becomes like a business. And so he's trying to turn in his conscience this into a business for the church and Peter reproves him repent therefore of thy wickedness pray God of Peter perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven now this is not just for those who are uh, in the past maybe dealt with exchange of funds in a denomination but even those who try to sell who try to sell in the church sometimes they bring their goods and their wares Maybe they make candles or they may bring some type of chocolates or items. They try to sell it in the church and they have to be brought to the scriptures concerning Jesus turning the tables over. This is a house of prayer, not a house of thieves. And that's something that needs to be taught to the men and women, because sometimes women will look at this as an opportunity to sell their products into the church. And that's something that has to be taught away with and sometimes it drives away saints when they are fresh into the church and they maybe try to sell their products in the church they set up a table and and a little poster and then they get shown the scriptures they either repent and are humbled or they get angry and they go back to the church where they came from it's you get different type of results but simon here was humbled but uh in verse 25 they preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem, and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans, you know. And Jesus, when he was in John chapter 4, he was preaching uh, in the area of Samaria. And you look at John chapter 4, looking at verse <coughs> number 40, uh, 39, it says, And many of the Samaritans, John 4, 39, 
of that city believed on for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that I ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the savior of the world. And so some of those individuals, when Philip preached, they heard about Jesus Christ. They mentioned, hey, I've heard about this before. I've seen him in person. You know, maybe she was baptized too, the same woman that Jesus met. The Bible doesn't teach us. But it says many believe. And so when it comes to the word as a seed, it goes out. You may talk to someone and then you don't see them three years later. Talk to them again. Whatever you have planted, it can be added. More information can be added because they live life. They've been afflicted by Satan. They've been through different scenarios when it comes to work and their marriage, you know, or different types of problems. And you can give them a, a word that enlightens their heart and comforts them in order to add more faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And that's how one is born again and baptized as well. It's not just a one-time thing. They can hear the word of God and, and then they obey later afterward. And so here in verse 26, the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, Arise, go toward the south, unto the way that go down to Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. So here's a situation where uh, <clears throat> the angel's telling Philip to go to one man, one person, which is a eunuch, great authority. Now, this is what I mean when it comes to us and the service that we provide and the service that we have for God, it doesn't matter if you're talking to a whole crowd of people or one person. Jesus talked to one woman, started with a Samaritan woman. Here, Philip is talking to one man. And so some individuals get caught up with the mindset of, I have, I have to talk to a lot of people. Um, and they don't go and talk to a single person that they meet to or run into at the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Because they're maybe they just came out of a school, uh, these school boys, these college schools, and they have that mindset of only serving in that capacity. But here we have Philip, the angels telling him. Now, Philip is uh, talking to the angel. You also have where uh, it's mentioned in Acts chapter nine, where Jesus is talking up to, uh, to Saul. And then you have in Acts chapter 10, where an angel is talking to uh, Cornelius. Now, we do not talk to angels where God talks to us directly in that fashion uh, today. Because some may read these scriptures and say, well, an angel talked to me in my dream. Or I talked to an angel in the marketplace. You know, or God talked to me while I was on the road uh, to, to Tennessee or to Florida. Those type of events don't occur as they do in the scriptures. Philip wasn't an apostle. And Ananias was not an apostle. But at this time... God was sending and talking through the Holy Spirit to disciples, preachers, and apostles. But that form of communication is not done today. It says also, verse 29, the Spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. So you have the angel speaking unto Philip to go toward Gaza. When he went to Gaza, the Spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. Now, the spirit that we have, the Holy Spirit, it gives us a remembrance of the scriptures. And we read what men that were inspired by the Holy Ghost wrote down, and we remind one another of what thus said the Lord through what they were inspired by when they wrote uh, the scriptures in the New Testament. And so what the, what the disciples, preachers, teachers, and apostles received from the Holy Spirit, as Luke is writing in Acts chapter 8, we don't have new information according to 1 Corinthians 13, where we can write more information. And so those, anyone that's saying that they can write new information because they heard an angel, Holy Spirit talk to them, or God talk to them, that's, that's a whole other gospel. And so here we have, he's talking to, <coughs> he's talking to the eunuch, uh, verse 30 says, Philip ran thither 
Simon heard him read Prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what uh, thou readest? If we can, uh, is there any questions or comments before we read the last verses 31 through 40? Yes, sir, uh, Brother Javier. Um, I was just looking back at uh, what was being read in Acts chapter 8, and it's just showing how prophecy was being fulfilled. Because when you go back to Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, uh, the Bible reads, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So we see here where uh, Philip was preaching in Samaria and the apostles came down and they preached in all these different cities in Samaria. Excuse me, in Samaria, and uh, we see the prophecy that Jesus had gave them that we read back in Acts chapter one as being fulfilled. That's all I have, brother. Uh, thank you, brother Green. God uh, bless. Thank you for my brother for that. Is there anybody else? <laughs> uh, brother Jared, can you read finishes off verse thirty one through forty? Yes. And he said, how can I let someone guide me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before his shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. and In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who would declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of, or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Now, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found in Azotus. And pass it through. He preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you, brother Jeff, for that reading. You know, the question is asked, do you understand what you're reading? Understand what thou readest. How can I accept some man should guide me? And so he called him up. Give me the understanding of what I'm reading. Led as a sheep to the slaughter. Like a dunk, lamb before his shears, so he opened out his mouth. His, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who should declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. This is powerful from Isaiah chapter 53. Where in Isaiah 53, in verse 10, it describes that thou shalt make a soul an offering for sin. That's in verse 10. In verse 11, for he shall bear their iniquities. In Isaiah 53, 12, it says, because he had poured out his soul unto death, he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, made intercession uh, for the transgressors. The power that occurred on the cross is what is being described here by Philip uh, unto the eunuch. He came from worship, a worship that was not accepted anymore, and God wanted him to hear the good news of what his son did on that cross, Amen. as he was reading Isaiah chapter 53, he wanted Philip to give him the detail of what Isaiah 53 meant. Who was it talking about? What power occurred? And he gave him the detail that this is talking about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. A lot of individuals in the world do not believe that Christ is the Son of God. They believe he's some prophet. They believe he was a good man. You know, sometimes they picture him with a sheep in his hand and a picture that's on the wall. And that's all they see concerning Christ. 
But Philip taught him concerning who Jesus was. And he taught him as they were on their way concerning water and baptism. Because as they ran into the water, he mentioned unto him, what doth hinder me to be baptized? He described to him what happened after the cross. He described to him that that is where one receives the forgiveness of sins and the Holy Spirit. The eunuch was very attentive to what was being read in Isaiah 53. And what was the commandment to be saved after Christ died, buried, and resurrected? And as he's seen that water, what hinders me to be baptized? Because I see the water. You told me about the water. I understood that this is the Son of God. Now, what is the hindrance? Verse 37, Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's what he told him. He commanded the chariot to stand still. They went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. The spirit knew what was in the eunuch's heart. God knew that he just came from worship and that he was no longer accepting that form of worship. God knew that he would understand Isaiah 53 when Philip described it to him and guided him. That's why he sent him unto him. The eunuch is what you call someone that is a true worshiper and a worshiper that was seeking after God's truth. And he knew that he would obey the gospel. So when it comes to those who we talk to, God knows here in this world who's going to obey and who's not. We don't know all the details if they will obey or not, but we just talk to them anyway. We communicate with them concerning the truth. And if they believe that Christ is the Son of God, he purchased the church with his own blood. Hebrews 9, 15 through 17, that the Old Testament was crucified to the cross. God will guide us to communicate to them and they will obey the gospel in the time that God has set in place. We don't know the future, but God does. God knew the future of the eunuch, where he was going, where Philip was at the time. God knew that Saul was going to persecute the church. And Philip was at the right place at the right time. And so was the eunuch at the right place at the right time. The Bible says, verse 39, when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. Went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. Passing through, he preached in all the cities till they came to Caesarea. So Philip, he was caught up. <laughs> he was not found. He vanished before the eunuch. We know Enoch and Elijah, these were two men that were caught up into the heavens and they were taken to paradise. But Philip, God did something different. He didn't take him to paradise. He took him to a place called Azotus to continue to preach the gospel so more souls can be saved. And so we are not going to be taken from one place to another. I'm not going to go from Houston to Canada in a split second. I have to drive there, fly there. But when it comes to us, we have given, we have been given the truth to give to others so they can obey that same form of gospel that the eunuch obeyed, that Simon the sorcerer obeyed, that many in Samaria obeyed. And for those listening, you have to be born again, a water spirit, just like the eunuch was, and just like these individuals were in Samaria. So you can have your sins removed, receive that in doing the Holy Spirit. You will not receive the gifts of prophesying of tongues to heal, to cast out devils, that has been done away according to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. But you will receive the indwelling, the seal that will bring all things to your remembrance concerning the truth. All you have to do is be born again, remain faithful, be thou faithful unto death, Revelation 2.10. God will give you a crown of life at the end. So for those listening, 
that are not a member of the Church of Christ, if you desire study on a different day, you can give us a call and we'll study with you. So you can be baptized and saved in the, if you're in a different city that you're at. Brother Green, I toss it back over to you. If there's any other questions or comments, uh, you may do so now. But I'll toss it back over to you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. And God bless you, Brother Javier. Great teacher, my brother. Uh, is there anybody that has any questions or comments that's uh, pertaining to tonight's study? Any questions, any comments? Is there any questions or comments that may not be pertaining to tonight's study? Anything at all? All right, if we have no other questions or comments, uh, just a reminder, brothers and sisters, uh, this Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page, we'll be having our open forum once again. That's 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on uh, Brother Stevenson's Zoom page. Uh, do we have anyone that has any prayer requests? Is there any prayer requests at all? All right, if we have no prayer requests, uh, Brother Kennedy, if you don't mind, could you please close us out with a word of prayer, my brother? Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, we're so grateful and thankful for the blessings you continue to bless us with each and every day. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for uh, the ability to gather um, aside from our congregation, local congregations to study as a unit. Father, we don't take these studies for granted and we're just so grateful uh, for the men that allow these studies to take place, um, these additional studies that can be used uh, to just uh, for a better understanding, Father. Um, it doesn't um, take away from what our responsibilities that we must do for ourselves, Father, but it's just so grateful to have additional um, studies. And um, we're so grateful for these platforms that allow us to do it in the comfort of our homes, um, and we don't take that for granted, Father. And we just at this time, Father, um, continue to be with um, all of our uh, leaders in your kingdom, Father, those um, who are steadfast and loyal to your word, Father. We just pray that you continue to um, be with them as they continue to uh, preach the word and be instant in season and out of season, Father. Um, we know that uh, that it can be a, a tough thing, and we just want to make sure that that they know that that we appreciate them. Um, pray that those who they um, provide um, spiritual guidance to encourage them and appreciate um, having uh, individuals who are um, cerebral about the word of God, Father. And um, we know there are a lot of people that are look for that lean on devices to 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 take shortcuts and add and create confusion, Father, and, and it's just something that we don't need. Um, and we're just so thankful uh, for the many examples that we have that's on these studies, Father. And and for those who may uh, need a, a prayer, um, whether it's healing, dealing with bereavement, um, just having tough times, Father, whatever their, um, their, their issue is, Father, we just pray that you be with them, be with all our saints, those who are sick and shut in, um, be with the city of Houston and Dallas and those areas that was affected um, as they continue to recover, um, be with those who lost um, and have them understand that uh, um, they can lean on, on Jesus, Father, and lead on the word, um, the ultimate healer. And Father, we just thank you for your son, Jesus, and his sacrifice who gives us access to the tree of life. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.